Make it so, man. All right, we're ready. Go for it. What do you mean, go for it? Do the the, the, pot, the sponsor. Why don't you read this head off first, and then I read the sponsor. No, the sponsor comes first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've done this four times. <laughs> He'll never make it in this business. The funny thing is, you could totally be right. I don't know. No, we only had three times. That's true. This is four. No, no. it's number three. No, this is four. It's three. Because we did Brain Scan, Monster Squad, and. Oh, uh, high. Oh, oh okay. High. Good point. You guys forget Slaughter right. High. Come on. Don't record us fighting. I don't want them to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> okay. Meet Your Monsters is brought to you by The Ugly Tree. The uh, Ugly Tree is a comic book series created by our own Abram Aiken. It's, it's a story of a young woman who must team up with horrible monsters to save her family from a madman. The Ugly Tree is a horror comedy. If you like the movies we talk about on this podcast, you will definitely see their influence in this book. You can check out The Ugly Tree on Facebook. The first issue is for sale now. The second issue will be available soon. Thank you, sir. That was nicely done. Okay, welcome to Meet Your Monsters. My name is Abe. These are my friends. Kathleen. Colby. Matt. Uh, For You at Home, Meet Your Monsters is a podcast in which I show my friends horror movies that I love and we find out if they can overcome their fear and love them too, or if they just think my taste in movies sucks. Uh, Our discussion will begin with uh, the old sinister synopsis. Can I say before anything that the one, like, as speaking as 116th Irish... I found this whole fucking movie offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> they stereotype the uh, the Irish temper of the leprechaun. Well, and he was drinking Jameson when he pulled up. Like, <laughs> I'm sick of that shit. Wait, all Irish people don't do that? <laughs> Unless you find a pot of gold. Yeah. Well, if, if you, you the find a pot out. of gold, you can drink whatever the hell you want, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's really the best time for Jameson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Leprechaun was made in 1993. It was written and directed by Mark Jones. It looks like he also wrote a whole bunch of episodes for Scooby Doo and Captain Caveman. Oh, really? I didn't would... know that. That's the hell's Captain it? Caveman? You've never yeah. seen Captain Caveman? <laughs> oh, no, he go, Captain Caveman. He'd fly with his big club. They have a awesome. plush toy of him yeah. at Toys R Us. Yeah, the shitty cape, Where like you're a caveman. At, like every other day, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the log line was, "Your luck just ran out." I noticed on the box they changed it to her luck just ran out yeah. because Jennifer Aniston was the big star. But they didn't have her as a big star originally. Yeah, because this was before she was found by friends. So. Yeah. Yeah, because the original movie cover title doesn't even have her on the box. She, this is all gone. Yeah. Was, so they, was Friends her big break? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe this was. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't have had friends if not for this. <laughs> As for the cast, we have Warwick Davis as a leprechaun, Jennifer Aniston as Toya Redding, Ken Alland as Nathan Murphy, and Mark Holton as Ozzy Jones. Can I say that as a kid watching this, I was convinced that guy was Kevin Bacon? That's I could have swore, like when yeah. I was 11, I could have swore that guy was goddamn Kevin Bacon. He's That's... wearing the exact same outfit as Kevin Bacon from Tremors. That's not too far fetched either because Kevin <laughs> he Bacon. Is wearing the same outfit as me. <laughs> It's not far fetched either because Kevin Bacon got his start in horror. He started with Friday the 13th. Did he? And, and yeah, was, his yeah. first movie was Friday the 13th. <laughs> which, and, uh, which Friday the 13th? The first, the first one. Well, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, God damn, how old is that guy? Johnny Depp, too. Johnny Depp was Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. Um, but there's a real famous uh, scene where, because everyone, everyone by this point, if you've seen any Kevin Bacon movie in the last you know, few years, has seen his huge wang, right? There's no, no yeah. a huge wang. <laughs> Didn't you guys see? Oh yeah, um, what was well, Wild Things? Wild Things. He, he was showed a. He turned around in the shower and it was like, God damn! <laughs> I don't remember that. I remember the swimming pool scene. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. And, and there was a scene in um, was it Shawshank? Not Shawshank Redemption. What was the Alcatraz? He was in Alcatraz and they were like spraying with a hose. And from the back, this thing was like dragging <laughs> the ground. <laughs> but um, but there's a scene in. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth, where he walks up on the dock wearing these little speedos, and he about he about kills oh, them all. Oh shit! I remember that <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like wrapped around like twice in these <laughs> speedos. Yeah, yeah. It, it's easy to get on a Kevin Bacon huge wang tangent. I guess but. Yeah. that should have been a superpower in that last X Men movie. So. <laughs> Snake cock. Okay, so um, so 
when I first saw this movie... Oh, are we just going to skip the synopsis? I mean... Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> skip the synopsis. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Rude. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> takes their bits so seriously. <laughs> so we've decided to do a lot shorter synopsis this time. We'll just give you the rundown and we'll fill in the holes later. Well, so. we figure you can see the movie yourself. Yeah. No I don't movie. know why you wouldn't have seen this movie. Yeah, yeah you should have seen Leprechaun. <laughs> So this is the story of a horrific leprechaun who goes on rampage after his precious bag of gold coins is stolen. He uses all of his magical destructive powers to trick, terrorize, and kill anyone who is unlucky enough to hinder his relentless search. In a frantic attempt to survive the wrath of the leprechaun, Tori and her friends scramble to find the only weapon known to kill the Irish monster, a four-leaf clover. Oh. The Irish monster, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> This is what it's all about. <laughs> the yeah, Irish monster. monster. <laughs> and apparently his destructive powers are riding things really fast. Yeah. Yeah, he gets around in this movie. <laughs> okay, Rides so roller skates super fast. A wheelchair. A pogo stick. They have <laughs> every tricycle, mode of transportation that a go person kart. can can operate by yeah, themselves. Two go karts. <laughs> yeah, because he souped one up out of a barn. Yeah. Okay, so so for the. The idea behind here is I will show you guys movies that I like, which I've done, and we find out if you liked it too. Um, when I first saw this movie, I guess I would have been 13, and I believe my brother brought it home, and we watched it and just thought it was the best fucking movie of all time. <laughs> the little leprechaun was hilarious. He's killing folks like crazy in crazy ways. Uh, what would you guys think? Oh, just gonna go I like Anybody it. can jump in. <laughs> um, we used to watch this when I was younger too, and... It was one of the ones where, like, it wasn't terrifying, so I was able to, like, make it through without, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny. freaking out. But. It scared the hell out of me as a kid. <laughs> like I said, I think it contributed to my fear of little people as a kid. And I was convinced that little people just bit people all the time, because that's all I'd ever seen, is little people biting people. Had you not ever met a little person? <laughs> no, I remember there was one working at Walmart when I was, like, eight, mm -hmm. and she scared the shit out of me. Because of the leprechaun? Well, I think Leprechaun and, like, Chucky from Child's Play. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know, every time I saw, like, a midget, it, I thought they bit Whoa, people. Oh, you just going to throw out the m -bomb? Oh, sorry. Ooh, little person. <laughs> I'd like to go back. <laughs> first, the first time I saw a dwarf, every time I seen small things. Is dwarf allowed? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, dwarf is totally dwarf acceptable. Is oh, okay. Which is yeah. weird. I think little person is more derogatory than... It sounds condescending. Midget. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, there's that little guy again. Yeah. Ooh. And really, like, to me, Dwarf was like, I thought, like, Gimli from Lord of the Rings, yeah. you know? But yeah, it sounds like a, like a fantasy cast, you know. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of that, this monster fits into the myth, legends, and fairy tale creature. Um, I did a little bit of reading, and we actually talked about this at work a while back. The leprechaun is actually considered a species of fairy. Which I always thought was interesting. To Species. Yeah. Or a... a <laughs> it comes from the phylum. A, the, yeah. The genus. <laughs> yeah. A, uh, so, yeah, Leprechaun's a fairy. Which, you know, he's got all the magic power, which yeah. is enhanced by the gold, which I believe is why not only are they greedy bastards for gold, but it actually gives them magical abilities. So. Which, um, in the movie... It's pointed out that one coin is worth five hundred dollars. Well, well, that guy might have been a hack. He we might don't, have. Been. We don't know that. And we haven't adjusted for inflation either. The yeah. movie was made in nineteen ninety three. That's true. So and that's he like twenty one years ago. And what he was looking at, it was like, "This is a gold coin." He didn't know it was leprechaun gold. That's true. Which he said might be priceless. He said but, it's got historical significance. It might. Be but for taking it at what he said, it's five hundred dollars. There was a hundred coins. This is fifty thousand dollars. This is all about fifty thousand dollars. But you also have to consider he's looking at a child and a handicapped guy. He's like, I'm gonna swindle these. <laughs> he's giving them quail prices. <laughs> yeah. Quail prices. Quail prices. What is that even? Haven't you seen there will be blood? blood? No. He's like, <laughs> we're not gonna give them oil prices. We're gonna give them quail prices. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're pretending it. to be quail hunting. Mm, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he wants to buy land for quail hunting. Yeah. What I thought was interesting about this movie is. There are so many horror movies that uh, what gets it going is horny teenage boys. And what gets this one going, really, what keeps Jennifer Aniston's character, Tori, from from leaving the house and going into the city and basically stopping the whole thing was she was horny for the painter guy. Yeah. He started talking to her and she's like, oh. And he was being, like, all chauvinistic and... Yeah. And uh, being rough with her. And she's like, oh, I fucking like this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, 
next thing you know, she's like, oh, let's go clean out the spider webs. And, yeah. And, you know, she was trying to be tough. And then so the original guy, Dan O'Grady, he was like the leprechaun slayer. He was pretty badass, apparently. Yeah, because he just fucking went for it. He went and got his four-leaf clover and his pistol, and he was like, I'm going to yeah. take this motherfucker down. He, I guess... Having gone to Ireland for his mom's funeral, yeah. he caught a leprechaun, which, as we saw in the movie, is no easy task. That motherfucker bounces all over the place. Yeah. Um, and then Dan O'Grady was like a rugby player or something. He must Ireland. have been. <laughs> he must have been the craftiest drunken <laughs> Irish guy in the world. And cause he had the four leaf clover, so he was ready to fight back. He was he was good to go. Yeah. He actually so he he was able to catch the leprechaun, get his gold out of it, leave the country. And then when when he found out that the leprechaun, leprechaun caught up with him, he was able to fight it off. And yeah, had he, he not was had like a stroke, he would have been happened. able to, yeah. to burn him to death. So, yeah, he's, he's pretty... I mean, I think it's just pretty par for the course for all Irish people to know how to do that, though, right? I guess that's if you're not... from Ireland, that, that's... <laughs> the I, do, I, do I feel like I have a, a sense of knowledge about yeah. it, just <laughs> kind of born with it. With your Irish <laughs> ancestry. Yeah. They taught keep... you math and English and leprechaun fighting. Yeah, I keep a four-leaf clover and a revolver in my mattress. <laughs> <laughs> One in your wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, have you noticed that in the 90s, like, all the characters... That you kind of hate were always from L.A. Like they always, always they always had that big city, like, I'm too yeah. good for this podunk yeah. shithole. <laughs> but this is an interesting story. I I, uh, I had a, a ex-girlfriend of mine when she was in Los Angeles. Uh, she ended up moving to a, a place in the south, and she kind of acted like that, even though she had only been in L.A. for a little while. Huh. Yeah, and then she like was kind of like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, well, maybe that shit just rubbed <laughs> she, off real she quick. She caught some L.A. I think, yeah, she you know, caught some yeah. L.A. I think that's just a, a movie thing because most of the movies are written in Hollywood and I think the people that live in Hollywood hate the people in Hollywood. Yeah. I, that's probably <laughs> that's true. They're projecting. If I, if I, too, if that, I like, the Hollywood. villains used to always be lawyers in the movies in the 90s. I think about, or like the businessman or a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, aren't they kind of the villain in real life, though? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Business that's kind of went away, though. Like, nobody talks about it anymore. Like, maybe the lawyers won. It's because there's so many monstrous business people in real life that were like, oh, fuck. Yeah, now they're, like, counting on their money yeah. in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Matt brought up an interesting point during the movie, which was that Ozzy was talking about seeing flying saucers. And then in Leprechaun 4, they're in space. And I thought, how cool would it have been if they would have tied that back together and actually showed a scene where Ozzy sees the spaceship and then he goes and tells the kid or something like that. Yeah. Would awesome. They would have, the kid would have been much older by then and doing uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. I don't remember when Part 4 came out, but probably around the same time, what do you think? Um, I think he maybe, was actually older in this than he was. He was older in this than... Mm-hmm. Oh, know. so he returns for 4? He's in this one? Oh. No, I'm saying I wish I would. I wish he oh, would have. I okay. wish I wish they would have had that set up where it's like, fucking Ozzy knows everything. Not only did he call the leprechaun, but he saw some flying saucers, and here we are in space. I'm pretty sure that took place way in the future, though. Is how they did it. Yeah. Um, I really liked how uh, the leprechaun, when he gets out of the crate, his powers are weak. Like he tries to lock Ozzy in the basement with him, yeah. and he closes the door, and he just opens the door and runs out. I love that shit because. He's been sitting in a crate for ten years, and even though he's a magical creature, he's still depleted. And I like that. I think that's a, a nice detail. Yeah, I wish clever. more movies would do that. Because you go, and then when he gets his gold back, he gets super strong. Yeah. And, go, oh, what? and then he uh, threatens to make an ear or, or a boot out of his ear, which I thought that must have been a teeny tiny little boot. <laughs> As a master cobbler, <laughs> I imagine he could. Maybe he's making doll boots or something. Yeah. Or maybe Matt's just like and be like a part of a boot. Like the rest will be like leather yeah. and then like just an ear. Like yeah, like the, the tongue, tongue or something. Yeah, the tongue is all ear meat. <laughs> and that guy was a big dude. He had some big ears. Yeah. So maybe. And he didn't say that about anybody else. Maybe that guy did really have boot quality ears. Yeah. <laughs> he may have. <laughs> Boutonnieres. No, anybody? No? <laughs> oh. No. And then her, okay. her dad took that. off, which is a, a good thing, because I think if her dad had stuck in around this movie, that would have been a short movie, because that guy was pretty badass. 
Yeah. He had that the belt buckle and the weird like '90s like skinny buff thing going he, on. He was kind of like a I wasn't like afraid a, of spiders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was kind of like a country guy who looked like he could get rough with it. So yeah, they might they were probably good to get rid of him. But he would have yeah. ended the whole thing real quick. Yeah. He probably like, had a four leaf clover and a yeah. pistol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got a pistol knife that in my shot belt. four leaf clovers. <laughs> um, one of the my favorite scenes was when she was she thought the dude was rubbing her leg under the truck. It was the leprechaun rubbing her leg, but she's like, oh, Nathan. And I'm like, why the fuck would he be under the truck <laughs> rubbing your leg? Why wouldn't you look down yeah. <laughs> just to see, just to make sure? Because he was clearly right behind her before that. And she's like, he must have crawled under the truck to caress my leg. Yeah. That's not weird? That's not like a weird move? I think that's fucking weird. But apparently... In the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Romance was a, was a little different back then. Yeah. <laughs> what was your guys' favorite scene? Hmm. I'd say it was... The eye replacement scene. That was a good one. It's fucking good. awesome. So, what he does is, is he, she, Jennifer Aniston's character comes upon, Corey. yeah, a police officer that he's already killed, and he takes the nightstick, and she jams it in his eye, and the leprechaun's eye, that is, and so he's like down an eye, and so his idea is just to take the cadaver eye from the cop and just pop it in his eye mm-hmm. and it works and it's pretty fucking awesome <laughs> yeah the thing, thing I get about that scene when the cop was running away from him is like he made it he hid behind the tree and the leprechaun's like oh he must have come this way or whatever the fuck he says and takes off in that way and I always think about that in movies why wouldn't you just run back like after he's gone run back the way you came and get in the car and just leave well then they'd be out one death scene. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, you're right. You're right. That's well, what I would do. Logically, that would be the, the way to go. <laughs> Some sort of escape would always be... Squish my face. <laughs> and that scene's awesome, too, because, like, he pulls the gun from the cop's holster and just fucking throws it away. It's like, fuck it, I'd rather squish his face with my hand yeah. and bite him and shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's just how he throws down. Like, yeah. How about you, Matt? What did you like? Um, I, I think it's a tie for me. I really like the end scene because like the animatronics they did for like the leprechaun's melted face were pretty cool. That was awesome. He had like the skull underneath, like a zombie. <laughs> and then the other one was the character building scene where they're painting the house, just because they clearly have never painted anything before in their <laughs> lives. Just like <laughs> splats of paint here yeah. and there. He's telling like. Uh, young Kevin Bacon is telling Jennifer <laughs> Aniston like how to paint and he's clearly you know the blind leading the blind in this situation yeah the little part that they had done was nowhere near a yeah. professional yeah. Job. but, but it was called you... three guys that paint so yeah. they weren't exactly the best company to hire I bet they, they were one making was a, 20 bucks one was a simpleton and the other one was a child yeah <laughs> you know what pissed me off about that is like he's, with his gold money he's gonna go buy comics and why is it always like the simpleton always likes comics <laughs> I think that I think that comics are so awesome that they just appeal to the good hearted. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Because if you ever go to a comic shop, it's the total opposite. Like, everybody thinks you're stupid when you try to talk to the, like, the comic fans. Or they think everybody else is stupid. But in movies, it's only well, we have a lot people. of comic snobs in our town. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it's just a Colorado thing. Yeah. If you go to New Mexico, they're all dipshits. <laughs> Wander around the comic stores. What was your favorite scene? I like when Nathan is running and he gets caught in a bear trap. Of yeah, nice. <laughs> and uh, that's the first time they all see the leprechaun and they all have to fight him off with sticks. And That was uh, a great scene because yeah. because you don't, the, the monster rarely just goes for it. Mm-hmm. And the leprechaun yeah. was just like, fuck you guys. Yeah, he's all like, <laughs> yeah. let's play surgeon. And he's he got did. an axe all of a yeah. sudden to cut his leg off. And he, <laughs> was, he was literally fighting all four of them at yeah. one time. He's yeah. like, fuck this jumping around but shit. Man, he's that, being beaten by four people. Yeah. Yeah. That oh. Kevin Bacon guy was whooping his ass with that <laughs> flashlight. Let's, let's get his real name in here what, what was Nathan's uh, and Nathan we'll just call him Nathan Ken Oland we, I'd call him Nathan or Ken whatever yeah. um, he was like fucking like Leonardo with that flashlight man he was like, <laughs> <laughs> but he was shit with that shotgun he claimed that he shot him six times but he really just emptied in a bush yeah <laughs> <laughs> how many bullets do you think that leprechaun has in him at least a revolver and half a shotgun full of them yeah yeah <laughs> That was a good scene. Mm-hmm. I really, I really love the uh, pogo stick death. That was one of my <laughs> favorites as a kid. But like, they didn't believe Ozzy that it, he was a leprechaun, even after they saw him. Yeah, yeah, it was. But 
Well, though, at that point, though, so they didn't believe the leprechaun. They're like, this is just a little dude in a top hat. And they're like, fuck it, shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't restrain him or anything. You know? Blow that fucking man to pieces. Well, <laughs> in their defense, though, he was straight whooping their ass. So. That's true. Like, <laughs> I, for him. Just you know, to like, he avoid was, embarrassment. He bit the fat guy's ear. He keeps messing with the guy's whoa, whoa. jacked up leg. Let's back up a minute. Let's remind ourselves that the leprechaun didn't do anything at that point. The guy just stepped in a bear trap. Yes. And he came running <laughs> out of a bush. tried to chop him with the axe. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, hold on a second now. Hold on a second now. If I'm walking through the dark and I step into a bear trap that has been set up to where you would trip and fall into it, and a little guy comes running out going, ah, ha, 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 ha. I'm going to hit that motherfucker with anything I could find and pee my pants. Maybe <laughs> maybe he was just like super excited to help out. Yeah, like, he oh. might have been like, my first you know, accident, I'm a medical student. Let's play like surgeon. That. I'm going to open this bear trap with this axe. You stay still. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just misunderstood is what I'm saying. He could have been. He could have been. And I love the nod to to his cobbler profession, where they chuck shoes at him, and he compulsively has to run around and shine them. <laughs> that was so funny. I wish they would have done more with that because it just cracked me up. They should have enslaved him at the end, <laughs> building shoes. And I would like to say too that I'm glad that towards the end of the movie they started to come around with Ozzy because they treated that guy like shit at the beginning yeah. of the movie. Kept saying how stupid he was, how he was a liar and he was wrong. And then everything he said was yeah. right. Even yeah. though clearly he was the smartest person. Yeah, ever. everyone keeps telling me he's oh. dumb and handicapped. And there was that scene when they were trying to find the, the four if clover and he was like, you gotta believe in the magic. And she was like, I'm sick of your fucking magic bullshit. And I'm like, bitch, you just saw a fucking leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chase after you in a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, she's been confronted by magic, like, yeah, straight on. And she, you know what? I thought of my second favorite scene. There's a scene when he hops in the cupboard, and they're trying to catch him in the cupboards, and they keep opening them and missing them, and he's popping up in other cupboards. Mm -hmm. And then he opens a drawer and just, like, pinches the guy's dick. <laughs> <laughs> he was making sure he wasn't Kevin Baker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nope, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd seen you before. <laughs> no. And uh, you were talking earlier, too, about how he had every form of, of wheel you could think of. Skateboards, roller skates, wheelchair. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the skateboard. I mean, this this leprechaun was just fucking crazy with the wheels. <laughs> he can shred. Like <laughs> Had it been a had it been a wintry scene, I wonder if he would have been on a snowboard and a snowmobile. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Even even making his own little go kart in the in the barn. I don't know if yeah. he made it or modified I the think one he, he already had. He teamed it. I think <laughs> so. I think he was like <laughs> had a welder in there. It was all yeah. <laughs> And it was so durable it was able to ram into a truck and tip it over. Yeah, it flipped the truck. <laughs> <laughs> And somehow they were magically out and hiding behind the bushes, mm -hmm. and she still didn't believe in magic. <laughs> um, let's move on to the terrible trivia, Kathleen. Although, says she wait, got some good trivia. there was one thing I thought of that I could release this back. Um, the, the Robocop remake on. The internet we saw, which if they were listening, the cock? hadn't seen it, yeah, he just like sh it's the best scene of RoboCop in which he shoots the guy in the dick, uh -huh. and he shoots a bunch of guys in the dick in this RoboCop remake. And I thought I, I don't know if it's because I saw that or if I just had the shoot of the of the dick mentality, uh -huh. but like when they shot him in the house, the leprechaun he was just laying there. And I thought, like, man, they should shoot his dick off. Like, <laughs> he was so just wait, like, are you talking about the scene where he attacks him? They shoot him with the shotgun, and he's laying there on the floor, helpless. Assume, you know, seemingly helpless. We all know he can't be stopped by a shotgun. And you're saying that while he's down, they should have shot him in the dick. Shot him in the dick. Yeah. <laughs> they even just like demoralize him. So what end exactly? Just to just to show that. Well, they I can. know he's gonna get back up. So I mean, like, if he's like up plus like. Shotgun, like, what do you call those things? Shot, like a... This is what it is? Like the... The buckshot. Buckshot? Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, that lodge in the dick is gonna at least, like, <laughs> fuck with him mentally, you know? If he even has one, he could be like a Ken doll down there. That's yeah. true. But, but okay, so so check this out. I think that they didn't do it on purpose because he took out that dude's eye and put it in his. Because what if he's like, oh. I need to be a new dick. And he takes <laughs> there. Maybe that's what he's doing. He's like, he's like a new system. You know? Yeah. I want me new cock. And he's like, you know, has to go through... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think it was probably a smart thing they didn't shoot him in the wing. <laughs> they really thought that out. <laughs> On the spot, too. They're like, shoot him in the dick. No, no. And it was an unspoken rule, too. They're like, no, guys. Yeah. Although that would have made for a, for a pretty interesting movie. Yeah. <laughs> but see, another thing, too, is I think that you're kind of going under the assumption that these guys... Are the type of people who would shoot a little guy in the dick? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Jennifer Aniston wouldn't shoot some guy in the dick? <laughs> she did do that tough guy where she like cocks it with one hand, yeah. and then she ran off to her jeep and drove to the old folks' home, even though yeah. they couldn't take him to the hospital in the same jeep. Yeah, forgot yeah, about they that. They just remembered they had a jeep. Halfway and the other thing I noticed is he's kind of on the paleo diet. The leprechaun is because he pops out of the crate and he's like, "I'm starved, me having or what the fuck he says, I haven't eaten in ten years," and he eats the cockroach. But scorpion. then he tries the Lucky Charms. Is it a scorpion? I thought it was... No, it was a, like a cricket thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some insect. He ate like a, a bug. Weta, a weta <laughs> and then he tries to eat the Lucky Charms, and he's like, that shit sucks, and pff, spits it out. Well, it was also really old, apparently. Yeah, it was like 10 years old. Do you think it tastes worse than paleo, a cockroach, bro. though? Or a scorpion? <laughs> mm. Okay. Terrible trivia. Terrible trivia. All right, as we kind of hinted at before, this was Jennifer Aniston's first feature film, and we know it all went downhill after that for her. Poor thing. Um, according to Warwick Davis, this was first pegged as a horror movie for kids, but when the studio saw it, they thought it'd be better aimed towards adults, so they did inserts to make the film um, more gory and more violent. I find that hard to believe myself. I guess if Warwick says it, he knows more about it than me. Yeah, it just bad. seems like a strange choice. Like, yeah. we have this really crappy, campy horror movie. Let's just throw some gore in it. And you know, I guess it might have just been going for PG 13, just get a little more. Has there ever been a so? horror movie? I guess it in um, The Gates, Monster Squad. There's yeah, been but a few. I guess I in hindsight, that makes a lot of sense. Because, like, like when he's trying to get, like, the. Um, the gold out of Ozzy because Ozzy's fault that's I forgot to mention that he's like he gets his gold back and he's like alright peace y'all mm-hmm. and he finds out he only has 99 of his 100 pieces and it's because Ozzy swallowed one and so when he's trying to get out of his butt he takes off his buckle and starts like slashing his face <laughs> you know yeah and then like it, it does seem kind of like I don't know Maybe that's what, when they went back and out of the gore. They're like, well, you can't slash his like, butt open. <laughs> well, and it wouldn't have been his face. butt. It would have been his stomach. <laughs> I don't know how many hours like it passed. A, yeah, like six hours had passed. It had to be like in his colon by now. You didn't see the At least lower intestine. Else, <laughs> see, and if they, were doing it, if they were doing it as a kid's movie, he would have just scared him so bad that he just shit it out. And he would just pull it out of his pants. Okay, what else you got? All right, um... So the company that makes Lucky Charms originally gave them permission to use their cereal in the movie. Um, However, once that company saw how gory and violent the movie was, they totally revoked that. And they got Lucky Clovers. Mm -hmm. That should have been the critical critique right there. They were like, fuck this movie. (laughs) These Lucky Charms. um, They gave them honeycombs and stuff. (laughs) Um, The filmmakers were forced to reshoot using a spoof brand called Lucky Clovers. But um, as a result... This led to the kick-ass line at the end where he shoots the leprechaun with a four-leaf clover and says, Fuck you, Lucky Charms. So. <laughs> All, right. All right. Another tidbit. The scene where Jennifer Aniston answers the phone and the leprechaun's hand comes through is an homage to the scene from A Nightmare on Elm Street where his when the main through. character is talking on the phone and it suddenly turns into Freddy's mouth tongue, and yeah, tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, then my favorite tidbit, just because I'm a huge fan, is um, John Sanderford, who plays Jennifer Anderson's dad in this film, also had the pleasure of playing the father of a Mr. Zach Morris on Saved by the Bell. And Holy that shit, that was his dad! Because I was watching it, and I was like, God, I know him from something, and I was like trying to think of every like crappy Lifetime movie I've seen where he <laughs> might be like the handsome and it was, father figure. It but, was the episode, don't they like, no, yeah, they crashed Lisa's car, right? And they're having, like, a toga party, and they crash somebody's car? Mm, I don't know. This one, the one I know him from is when Zach Morris is, like, wanting to go on a ski trip, but his grades are poor, and he's acting out and all this kind of stuff, and he's trying to get his dad's attention, but his dad is so focused on business that he ends up, at the end, having to call his dad and being like, it's your son, you know? Uh, See, there it goes again. The Mm -hmm. businessman was the villain. 
Those sort of. Sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but to be fair, there was probably three or four people that got to play Zach Morris's dad <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. over time. But However, <laughs> and he had like the best fucking phone of the time, so maybe he should be a little bit more grateful for his dad's A phone very work. similar to Jennifer Aniston's large red one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my mobile suitcase. Yeah, it's like the like size of a laptop at this point. <laughs> yeah, Colby, uh, let's let's uh, do this Colby count here. Um, even though as I think it's always important to remind people we count boobs individually. So if they're seeing just one boob is showing, we count that as one boob. And if later seeing there's two boobs showing, that's three boobs total in the movie. But it doesn't matter because there's goddamn zero boobs, in this yeah. movie. Not a single boob to be had. Um, however, there were six bodies. Nice. Yes. That's a, that's a decent And you're counting count. the leprechaun's body at the end? The leprechaun's body at the end counts as a body. Because he did get trashed at the end. Yeah. yeah. Got burnt up like a piece of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and on to the critical critique, sir. This one is just hard for me to understand. Well, let's explain. Um, the critical critique is yeah. where we find a, a critic who talks shit about this movie we love. And, hey, we're all on board this time. We all like the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um... And we talk shit about that person for talking shit about our movie. Yeah. Well, then we all like Monster Squad, too. We all love yeah, Monster Squad. Got... I think the only one was, what was it? Brain Scan. Brain Scan. Not Kathleen didn't mm-hmm. like yeah. That shit was awesome. Boo. Brain Scan was awesome. Boo. Okay. So this is, um, the critic, his name is Steve Crum. He's from <laughs> VideoReviewMaster.com. <laughs> Review Master. I think Steve Crum is the master of reviews. Um, an- another psychotic thing, he has thing in quotations on the prowl this time in time for saint patrick's day that's it that's, that's the whole review, review. <laughs> it is one sentence it doesn't really sound it's not, bad. yeah it's not good or bad it's just like hey it's a movie and it's a definitely saint not patrick's the review day. a review master would give yeah if you ask me but. it should be the re- like the review apprentice <laughs> yeah. the review apprentice <laughs> i bet that i could do an equally masterful job reviewing that review which would be another shitty review <laughs> <laughs> from the so-called review master <laughs> Yeah, I got nothing. Uh, one sentence, it's not really good or bad. It's a very neutral review. I mean, even taking the time to put that on the internet just seems a little <laughs> yeah. bit wasteful. <laughs> yeah, why, why would you? Really? <laughs> if you're going to go through the trouble, I'm like, it takes longer to sit there and go like, I'm going to... Did he watch the movie? Yeah. I don't. He didn't even have to watch the movie. <laughs> he just saw the case at Blockbuster. You can get the gist from the case. <laughs> yeah. Saint so Patrick's Day horror film. <laughs> he like looked at his watch and was like, "Hey, it's not Saint Patrick's Day." Yet. <laughs> I get to see him sitting back after writing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Job well done. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> I'll find out years from now that he was about to write the most amazing, beautiful review, and they had some sort of family emergency. Yeah. In the middle, and he's like, "Oh shit, I got the one sentence. Like I got to get hit by. A I got to take my kid to the hospital." He went out and gave him CPR and like saved the drive. Or maybe it's like some butterfly in the diving bell situation. <laughs> I didn't see movie. that movie. It's where the guy writes a whole book with like one finger because he's paralyzed. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh so he's the diving bell and the butterfly. The <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's working on a sentence two right now. <laughs> <laughs> he just did the period as we're speaking. He's like, ah. <laughs> I have so many things to say about this wonderful film. <laughs> yeah. If only these limbs would let me. Uh, it was funny too because a lot of the reviews as I was as I was looking through them were like 2006. And I'm going, who's going back to review a movie from '93? <laughs> the video review master. It's like they're just looking for. He just needed something to add to his archives. It's like I'm pissed off. I'm just gonna go talk some shit about something. <laughs> Fuck Leprechaun. Yeah, <laughs> that was an old movie. Fuck them. They're... Yeah, Leprechaun is a kick ass movie. It's and now for the, the Quetzal Quoto portion of this little podcast, which I seem to love, and you guys. Are resistant, <laughs> reluctant to find a good quote? Did anyone quote. else get a quote? Anybody? I got one. All right, uh, let's I got one this time. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll think of one later. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are... <laughs> okay, mine was, what was the little kid's name again? Uh, you have Alex. Paper. Alex, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Alex Murphy, yeah. Robocop was. <laughs> oh my god. No, he could have been related to Robocop because he definitely would have shot his dick off. <laughs> <laughs> <Robocop>. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Um, mine was by Alex Murphy. He said when they were discussing what they how if it's possible to kill a leprechaun, he said it's possible to kill anything, and he went over his strategy to kill a leprechaun. He said to put a three fifty seven three fifty seven magnum to the little green bugger's head and blam, blood and guts and brains everywhere. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I appreciate that type of resolve. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, fuck, I'd just shoot him in the head. What yeah. would you do? He had a plan. He was ready to go. Yeah. How about you, Kathleen? Um, mine is when they are in the barn and Ozzy has just revealed that he has the last piece of gold in his stomach and then turns to run away. The leprechaun starts to chase him but manages to kick the guy, um, his leg that had been in a bear trap. Nathan and, with the wounded leg. Yeah, yeah. And all he does is go... How's the leg? And just keeps running like, after he kicks it. Like, it's just so simple, but it was like yeah. the funniest yeah. part. It's like, he doesn't quite grasp that he's terrorizing these people to death. <laughs> yeah. Or he's just so used to it that it ain't shit to or him. Or maybe he's so pissed off because, like, somebody stole his fucking retirement money and he just wants it back. And they just won't give him his money. I mean, it is his money. I think that's another reason why I love this movie so much is because... He seemed like he was having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood and guts everywhere, and yeah. the whole time he's laughing and smiling. Yeah, he's doing his job, but he enjoys it. Yeah. Like, he could easily just, like, walk up and stab all these people and get his gold back. He's like, fuck it, I'll just pop in and out of covers and well, squeeze their dicks. Well, they could have <laughs> taken this movie and made it, like, this is one badass leprechaun. But they, but they went, you know, this is a fucking leprechaun. Let's just make him, let's yeah. just make him wacky and have fun with it. And I thought it was great. Yeah, I, was I really awesome. enjoyed it. Um, for my quote, it was actually the line right in front of your quote. And he says, Alex says to Ozzy, he's, or Ozzy asks him how they can kill it. And he says, you can kill anything. You've just got to know how to do it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. True words never spoken. And then, of course, he explained it with <laughs> yeah. the 357. But yeah. Yeah. And, and at the very beginning, there's a really wonderful little thing. He says, try as they will, try as they might. Whoever steals me gold won't live through the night. Underrated little quote. It's pretty awesome. I, I would have put that on the on the box. Yeah. How much of this movie have you memorized? Oh, I've seen this movie like <laughs> yeah. six hundred times. This movie haunted me as a child, so I can't forget it. I first watched it in '93. I would have been thirteen. And he made it. We were talking about this before the movie. He made an appearance at MTV Spring Break in full costume. And I remember watching that scared the shit out of me. He was like, <laughs> walk around it's on the beach, the beach. like, Arr, it's me, you are Davis. It scared the shit out of me. Well, I think, too, it, you know, being, being 13 when I saw it, uh, I knew Warwick Davis from Star Wars and things like that. And Willow. so it's in Willow. And so as soon as I saw him, I was like, yeah, it's that fucking guy from Star Wars. I love that dude. And then... How'd you know it was him? Yeah, I was going to say, I had no idea who Warwick Davis oh, but was I, when I was 13. I think that I did so much digging into Star Wars, I knew yeah, I knew who everybody I was. I knew Warwick Davis, you know. <clears throat> um, and I just, you know, being a horror fan, I was just like, Star Wars guy in a horror movie, I'm fucking all in. That reminds <laughs> me of a story we should tell our listeners. We were at um, Starfest, and Peter Mayhew was there. If people don't know, Peter Mayhew played Chewbacca. And maybe you got to take a pee next to Peter Mayhew. That that was an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah, I I went into the bathroom and standing next to me at the urinal next to me was Chewbacca, big yeah. tall ass Chewbacca, and he had uh, kind of a raspy breathing. I was concerned the whole time <laughs> that he was going to fall over and I was going to have to like do some pants down CPR. Or <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ah. but he, he, we both we both managed to get out of there. Well, I figured, you know, if you're so stoked to see an Ewok play a leprechaun, like seeing Chewbacca. Oh in yeah, life. he didn't have the costume, of course. That was just a big, tall Peter Mayhew. Yeah, but, but he wore a Chewbacca shirt the whole time. Yeah. at this convention, it was exciting because the whole time I'm sitting there going, like, I'm taking a leak next to Chewbacca. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Funny we should bring that up given the. Star Wars and Leprechaun. Mm. Yeah. I think I did. I did think of a quote while okay. you guys were quoting quotes. Um, I thought. I think my favorite one was where they found the gold, or Ozzy and the kid found the gold, and the kid tells Ozzy like, "We can finally get enough money for, to have that operation to make you smarter." <laughs> I was like, "That's the most fucked up thing to say ever." And what's even more fucked up is nobody tells him that that's not a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just goes on kind of thinking like, yeah. well, at first he's offended because he's like, I'm smart. And they're yeah. like, no, nah, dude. <laughs> you need the operation. <laughs> Kid's a little prick. Like, yeah. yeah. You're a fucking gomer. But at the end, he was like, you're smart, Ozzy. You're smart and good. And everything was 
hunky dory. Yeah. <laughs> um, we should we should tell everybody what the de- how they ended up killing a leprechaun was. Before. They found a four leaf clover. He had Conveniently kid, placed right outside the house. Right outside the house, yeah. And then, um, well, shit, they should have just got the one from the basement. The old rotten still one? There. Yeah. They didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't you know it was stale full <laughs> Yeah. You crazy. And so, and then the kid, like, wads it up with some gum and slingshots that shit right into the leprechaun's mouth. Mm-hmm. Pretty badass. And then he did the that was the whole fuck you lucky charm thing. Yeah. Fuck and you then and then the zombie leprechaun comes out all jacked up and they they hit him back down into the well with the shotgun and then they throw a bunch of gasoline down there and and blow the whole fucking yeah. thing to hell. This movie was kind of like a reverse No Country for Old Men. Explain. Well, like the whole uh, like in No Country for Old Men, it's like they're trying to get away with this money. <laughs> but in he's Leprechaun, he just keep fucking those guys. Just determined to get it back. Like all he uh, wants is his goddamn money back. You know. Yeah. Uh, and you know what else? What else made this movie so great was Wayne's World. Because how many times did you hear "I want me gold"? Wasn't that a something they kept saying in Wayne's World? Yeah, he'd shine the flashlight as face. Yeah. Go, I'm the Leprechaun. I'm the Leprechaun, <laughs> and he'd go. Oh, and it was so funny. <laughs> and it, it just gets stuck in your head. I mean, God, it was popular enough where there's. What six sequels and a remake? Yeah, you know it's it's. Yeah. It, Did the remake happen yet? Uh there's an alleged remake. Oh, yeah, there's the a remake. One, yes, sirs, get ready because there's going to be a goddamn Meet Your Monsters <laughs> about the Leprechaun remake. Unless it's no good, then we won't waste our time. Supposedly it does <laughs> not it's have Warwick Davis. Better than Davis Slaughter High. Mm-hmm. What's that? Supposedly it does not have Warwick Davis. In it. Yeah, I see right there. I'm like, mm, yeah. I don't yeah. know, but we'll we'll consider it. Anyone have any last words as we mm-hmm. as we finish this up? Well, we did we. We kind of talked about toying with a segment where we really dig into the the movie. Oh and yes, please do. Do the uh, what would you call I mean, it? This is the like the Matt's themes. existential philosophical. <laughs> yeah, we need a we need yeah. a mm-hmm. we need a cool where we read way it, like, too much into it into subtext that probably isn't there. Yeah. So I thought, in my opinion, picking up on some subtext, they were painting the house uh, blue and red, and the house was white, and I think that they're trying to show their superiority. Over As Americans Ireland? over oh. the Irish, and in a way they did. Maybe it's all Hopefully about the right. American greed, <laughs> stealing from the Irish because he just wanted to get it back, and they were like, "No, fuck you, <laughs> eat this <laughs> clover." That's right. And yeah, and touching on that again, it seems that Jennifer Aniston's character kind of had the right idea the whole time, like being generous and handing out the money to that when that one painter tripped over. Yeah, he was he was offended. He's like, "You can't buy me." <laughs> it's like I you just can't want an get, apology. You can't get rid of me just by paying me off. And it's that's funny, exactly yeah. what happened. Like that's how she got rid of the little car. Would have been by, the other by being not greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your gold back. See yeah. ya. That's what I wonder like if Ozzy like pooped out the gold later like do you think he like like went through in the well like just in case? He probably you know? should have. Okay, so you're not you're not going to blow up gold so it'd still be down there yeah. you know you're gonna it's just melted into one big like hunk now yeah, yeah. climb down there and find a big p- pile of melted big blob of melted gold yeah. I wonder if it would if it would still have its power but then, if it's know. if Leprechaun's dead then shit Ozzy's got 500 bucks at least right. at least at the very <laughs> least yeah if, if he gets scammed by that well that guy's dead as shit now so yeah he got pogo sticked to death yeah <laughs> Well, I believe that is the end, unless somebody's got some last words they want to say. Got nothing. Okay, um, that is the end of Meet Your Monster for the week. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, guys, and watching this this lovely, lovely movie that I love so much. A classic. Um, and thanks to the people at home who are listening to this. I'm sure there's millions and millions. Yeah, by the time this airs. That's the thing, <laughs> is it's a special edition... Yeah, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day edition. (laughs) However, you're probably not going to hear it until like two months from (laughs) now. Next year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We'll get it on there. Um, If you want to follow along, next week's movie will be uh, The Hills Have Eyes, which has another special occasion because Kathleen and my anniversary is coming up at the end of the month. And Mm -hmm. that was the first movie we saw together. Hills Have Eyes. The remake or the original? The remake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Okay.